What's up, everyone? I'm Shadeen, and we want to welcome you to another episode of Outpour. What? with our guest correspondent, Marquise Irons. Marquise was out in the field talking to Nikki Powerhouse, who is an actor, writer, director, and producer of her very own one-woman show called The Art of I Am, chronicling her life growing up as a black queer woman. Let's take a look. I know that you're a big presence, yes, and you've sir. always been a big presence for what I heard. Mm -hmm. So I've actually read about you in this book yeah. by Clay Kane. Yeah. And it's called Live Through This. Yes. And all the chapters about you, I lived for you. Because yeah. you were in about a lot of these chapters, and they yes, were buddy. like some of my favorite chapters. Uh -huh. So, that big presence, were you always that big presence, and did it come from something that you may have seen growing up, uh, maybe friends that you have admired? Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's always like a learned behavior. I think that most importantly, yes, that Clay Kane is yes. my dear friend. I've known him for 25 years. Yes. So when he captured me, he captured all of me. Yes. He's, he's like been through it all, through the fire right. and all. Right. Uh, when I, my personality yes, lived through this. Mm -hmm. Really, I would, I would say that I learned it from when I first stepped into the Nile. Yes. Okay. Which was at 13th and Locust, which was the first gay club that I went to. Right. And it was so much life, mm. you know? Right. And coming from life that people are telling you, you need to be this, or you need to be that, or you're not, you're too this, you're too that. Mm -hmm. Bigness on the outside was in the physical, mm. but bigness in the club yes. was in the spirit. Nice. Like, honey, I, I, I lived. lived fully myself, you know right. what I mean? It wasn't, it wasn't about, um, try to fit in mm -hmm. it was like be more of whoever you are mm. here okay. in this club in nice. this for these four walls mm -hmm. your last oh. <laughs> you are a phenomenal actress and yeah. i'm i'm willing to bet any amount of money that you can play any role yeah but they give you because that you were snatched yeah okay <laughs> so who would be your favorite actress and why I mean, there's so many, you know, I think. Mm -hmm. um, the first person that comes to mind is Viola Davis. Mm, nice. Because I think not only is she transparent and authentic on screen mm -hmm. or on stage, mm -hmm. she's that in real life. Like, she is nothing for her mm -hmm. to share where she's been right. in a garment, in a uh, not, yes. gown. Yes. And you're like, wow, this this is a real person. Right, right, You right, know what right. I mean? So you, you trust her, you know, and I think... Um, I really, I really um, admire her because of the fact that mm -hmm. it it's nothing for her to be herself, nice. regardless. Right, right. And right. tap into that self mm -hmm. when bringing life to a character. And I right. think, that, and that's how my work has always been. It's important for me to be unafraid right. to bring me mm -hmm. to the character because I think that that's the only way that my audience is going to be able to, to relate and connect. Right. You know. Um, so yeah. yeah. So speaking about speaking of Viola Davis, do you yeah. think that black actresses actually have the platform that they deserve and the pay amount that they deserve? I think that they they haven't, mm -hmm. but because when we know where where we're coming from, right. especially I think that in in terms of the pay, like Viola Davis said the same thing as um, which I was her name, child. Ooh. Wow, what is her name? You know. So, we know. You know. I don't know. No, <laughs> I need her name, name honey. What is her name? Uh, <laughs> Give me a movie she played in. Uh, Precious. The big, uh, Monique. Monique, honey. Monique. Monique. So the, shade, the thing is, I think that in comparisons to how Monique kind of approached the situation. Right, right. Was a little bit more like, we understand that, that there is a pay cut. Right. Because the world society can't take us. Mm. They, they can't really 
there isn't an amount of money. What we come to the stage, what we come to the stage, With. the screen, yes. where we dig from, mm -hmm. that, that is there not, there's not a, enough money that really can really right. say to us, work. Right. But that doesn't take anything like what David said when she when she quoted and she was just like, you know, I've been doing this work. I've been doing I've been in and out of this business for all these years. Right. Then pay me what I'm worth, you right, know. Right. And but she still keeps coming to the screen, to the stage 100 mm percent. -hmm. Her energy is infectious. I love it. Yes. Awesome. Oh, my God. Amazing. I would awesome. love to see more LGBTQ folks in the media. Where yeah. are we on mm -hmm. TV? And I feel like there's also kind of, um, well, the way I see it is that the a lot of the independent films or a lot of the mm -hmm. like kind of smaller films have had to like take the lead with Absolutely. actually bringing in LGBT people to show representation and so that we can kind of like, since they're not going to allow us or give us space, we're going to like make our own space or exactly. we're going to like force our way in there mm -hmm. kind of thing. And it's like now since that's happening, it's like you kind of are have no choice but to um, acknowledge um, this brilliance and this great talent and you can't just like deny that or you can't just like oh we don't see it no we're, when you're in your face when we are in your face you can't deny us so it's one of those things I feel like they're, they're left with no choice but to like start to incorporate and start to integrate LG, LGBT people especially people of color into mainstream media for me I think my whole exposure with the uh, LGBT that's not even to add a color to it for me, when I first saw LGBT individuals on TV, it was queer as folk. Hmm. It was HBO special white people. Hmm. And I loved the show. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. That's That was my first exposure to LGBT people on TV. Wait, what was it called? Queer, queer as folk. And it was a Showtime. Queer right? as what? Was it Showtime? Oh, yes, honey. I've, I've never, never heard of that. I've never heard of it. I think it was HBO. I don't know. No, no, no. If we are all out here, mm -hmm. how come it's taken Hollywood so long to give us authentic queer roles. So, you know, I remember this summer when uh, Pose came out, mm. for example, and there was a line in that movie that I was sitting with a date and uh, <laughs> we were talking and the young man, the lead, one of the principal roles, he said, how do you know if you're a top or a bottom? Mm. And I remember thinking to myself, oh my fucking God, I remember when I was 15 and I asked another gay man that. How do you know when you're top or bottom? Mm -hmm. That was the first time I saw my life being reflected on television. Mm -hmm. And I, I had never had that feeling. You know, I've watched a lot of great movies. I've seen Moonlight. But that was the first time I said, that's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. They, they nailed my experience, you know, being black and gay. You know. That just goes to another ceiling being broken. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? First of, all, first of all, being black and on TV is one thing. Mm -hmm. Then add, like, as Antar said it, you know, being black and gay, oh my goodness, what, what, what is mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you even have that being acceptable on TV now? Mm -hmm. Is it okay? Right. We're fighting for more than just being black and gay now. And it's like, and when it is shown, it's not positive. Yeah. These aren't like, um, you know, good representations. It's more of like the negative stuff, maybe the negative stereotypes or the negative stigma associated with people of color or people who are LGBT. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, like, what about the positive stuff? What about the other, the flip side to some of maybe the negative things that are kind of being reinforced? Mm -hmm. As these roles come out more and more, where are all of the gay actors, right? We know that there are tons of queer people in Hollywood. They run Hollywood, They're right? Here. Like gays run Hollywood. We run Hollywood. Mm -hmm. I don't, I think like, People have a hard time, especially when you're a male, if you are playing, if you're a black male and you're gay and you're out, then how do you, you know, is it going to be believable that you can play a heterosexual male? Now, you know, you have what, former Doobie Hauser, what's his name? Neil, Neil Patrick, Patrick Harris. Harris. Neil, Neil, Patrick, Neil Patrick Harris. Okay, okay, okay. You know, I mean, he can play a heterosexual man, but also he's white too. Mm. So that yeah. is, that he is capable of doing that. But, you know, it might not be as palatable if for white or black America to be able to see a gay black man or a gay uh, or a trans or a trans woman mm -hmm. playing, you know, a cisgender woman mm -hmm. or uh, but, but why is that when we let White people play people of color. Mm -hmm. We let straight people play every kind of mm -hmm. every other thing mm -hmm. right trans identities mm -hmm. Every orientation. Why is it more believable to be white and straight than anything else? I don't think it's a point a point about being more believable 
I think it's a point about accessibility. Mm. Yes, say That's more. Yes. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. I think you know we we fought hard and long to get just being on TV being black. Now you realize we got to fight long and hard to be black and gay. And you know, you know, there had been barriers broken. You know, as as you said, what gay is going to Hollywood? Look at Tyler Perry. Oh, what is it? Oh, oh, oh. I mean, I mean, he's feeling too. I'm sorry. I mean, okay, well, we you know. cannot afford that <laughs> but legal suit. Also about allegedly, no. It's also about JK. JK. Allegedly, JK. <laughs> allegedly. Uh, but it's also about credibility as an actor. Yes. You know, that's we gotta speak to that so, point. I as mean, well. like, so I spoke to. I had the pleasure um, a couple years ago of speaking to. Ava DuVernay, and yeah. she was oh, able to tell, she was able to tell what is the biggest issue in Hollywood with black folks getting in. So you know Hollywood is unionized. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know people don't know that. So from the set design people to the producers, um, they are all you have to get a certain number of hours to be in the union. Mm, but I never will, knew that. Yes. So, but how do you get those hours if you're not being hired? Exactly. Mm-hmm. So you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It, so it's about you have to have accessibility. You know, that's why I always talk about when when people ask me just about doing this particular show. It's not big. It will be, of course. Um, but I was very clear on my intentions on creating something that was for black queer folks um, produced behind the scenes and in front of the camera. Mm-hmm. I did not want... Um, heteronormative folks, heterosexual folks at all um, in the development. Mm-hmm. Maybe down the line, you know, I might need a, you know, assistant or something. But what's the um, what's the director Monique got into it with? What's his name? Oh, uh, Lee Daniels. Lee, Lee Daniels. Daniels. Mm-hmm. So it's about the accessibility part. It's going to take a lot of directors to put their name out on the line for those black and gay individuals. Mm-hmm. And that yeah. goes back to the credibility. It goes back to the accessibility. I think for me, I think that sometimes it's about maybe those studio, the white, let's, let's be specific mm-hmm. here, the Hollywood. white studio mm-hmm. execs who maybe sometimes is their discomfort that um, that allows for them to believe that maybe it's easier to have someone who is not of that community or who whose real life is closely aligned with that character. Mm-hmm. Right. So, so because that could become too much, maybe like I said, because of their own discomfort, it's just easier to say, okay, hey, we're just going to get somebody else and then yeah. have them go in that role and then we don't even have to be uncomfortable but we don't have yeah. to enter that space. We don't have to actually face the reality of what we're portraying and what we're acting out. But when we think about the numbers, right, that communities of color actually mm. spend the most money, right, that they actually mm. are the biggest yeah. consumers. Yeah. So when studio execs are thinking about where their money is going to come from, mm. it comes from primarily and first and foremost communities of color. And we know Black Panther just killed it at the box office. Absolutely. Yes, like Black Panther yeah. literally broke records. When you're talking about a billion dollar mm. film, yeah. that is like so much is black people doing great and kind of like, you know, on the front end of it as well as the back end. Black people. Where was the black and gay? I love Black Panther. Mm-hmm. Where was the black and gay? So speaking of that, mm. I don't know if many people knew this, but. One of the characters in Black Panther, the chief warrior, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that in the comic, she's gay. But not in the movie. But not in the movie. You wouldn't have got that from the movie, right? right? Actually, maybe maybe let me be precise, because I'm actually not sure if she identified as gay. Gay, But definitely she had sexual fluidity in that there was a relationship with a woman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where did that go? Yeah, Mm -hmm. that's true. Was it, I wonder, was it the discomfort? Was it, how do we present this in a way for maybe even the black community? If they felt as if the black people would be the There we go. How do we present it for Mm -hmm. them for it to be acceptable Mm -hmm. enough to say that this is also a part of our culture, too? What do you think that would have added to the movie? I think it would have added a lot. I think it's almost like I feel like um, when you talk about just positively a lot or negatively a lot. Positively, even even if it's even if it's a gets a negative reaction, that could still be considered long term positive. Mm -hmm. So, like if we look at like uh, Alice Walker's um, uh, The Color Purple, right? Uh, You know, Steven Spielberg, they just could not deal with a lot of the you know sexual fluidity between Miss Suge and Seely. Mm-hmm. And that was like, if you read the book, that was like a love story. So do we think that with all of the already negative stigma, negative associations with people of color, black people specifically, mm-hmm. do we think that adding the, uh, the extra layer of being LGBTQ maybe as an extra barrier or an extra layer to kind of 
just makes it even that much more difficult to break through and to actually get across to people. There we go. That's the elephant in the room that we mm. need to address. Culturally, it's not acceptable. But that's I think that's also very recent. Yeah. yeah. That if we look at indigenous communities, indigenous of any color, but even thinking of actual indigenous native tribes, right, yeah. that sexuality and gender have always been fluid. Mm. Yes, and, absolutely. And I see more and more independent artists really pushing to demonstrate who we are, right? Yeah. That we aren't just straight, mm -hmm. right? That we come in all genders and all orientations. And I'm wondering what roles would all of you be excited to see moving forward? I feel like LGBT folks of color are sometimes so hungry for representation mm. that we will eat mushrooms, um, <laughs> like not mushrooms, marshmallows instead of turkey. Mm. You know, because we're so hungry for representation. Even if the representation is not, even if it's subpar. Who's who's responsible for that? I, I feel know, like yeah. I feel like we need more. I mean, yeah. we need more roles. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. What what stories would you yeah. want to see? I well, know. I think, I mean, even, even recently, you know, I think the show went off now, but Star, Star you know, is I mean, everything. I love Star. Look, look at Amaya, you know, she, she was, even, even her role on, what was it, Housewives, was very uh, instrumental to where she is let's, Wait, let's talk about this. She did not have a role on well, Housewives. Well, that's why I said, she made even a brief cameo. The cameo, the appearance, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. <laughs> so cameo now that we clarified <laughs> that her stardom was not from Housewives. Role, <laughs> cameo appearance, even that little bit has led up to where she is today. Sure, I always thought uh, Laverne Cox and Janet Mock and some of those other individuals who broke those glass ceilings were really good um, because I think, again, they were more palatable. And, you know, like I said, Jackie Robinson was not considered the greatest basketball player. Ba ba baseball player. <laughs> Different episode of yeah, yeah. All, baseball, all tonight. I know. Baseball player. Goodness. But he was palatable. So I think that's where kind of like it's, uh, you know, double... You just hit on a little bit. I think Janet Mock is another person who is um, a black trans woman who has also started to pave the way and mm -hmm. who has definitely led by well, example. She's been and, and, and when I say that she she's on she she's on different platforms of media. So we're talking exactly. about print. We're talking about behind the Publication, scenes. We're talking about in front of the camera. We're talking about editing, writing. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the whole plethora of entertainment so and media getting the messages to out make there. A, a difference. You don't have to oh, necessarily no, be no, out no, in front. No, no. We can be the writers. We can be the directors. We can be the producers. We can be the ones that are you know telling the story. So there are so many different ways to be able yeah. to do that. I well, I mean, in, in respect to that, I mean, let's look at Grace Jones. Hmm. Yeah. Grace Jones. Okay, so what she she classifies herself as being an androgynous. Hmm. Am I saying that word right? Androgynous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, very masculine, very feminine. Mm -hmm. You know, and she has always stood for her own standard. Mm -hmm. It may not be Hollywood, mm -hmm. but look at fame. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In that respect, modeling. Mm -hmm. The whole world of modeling pushed a lot of black people out there, mm -hmm. and she has been a standard for African American females and males both alike. Okay, can we back up just a little bit? Because, so thinking about Grace Jones, okay, so I'm thinking about maybe like, let's think about the Me Too movement. So with Grace, mm -hmm. so, okay. and, and yeah. I'm thinking about specifically about Janet okay. Mock a little, uh, Janet Mock a little bit. So there was, a, what, was it an accusation or yeah. there was okay. something in regards yeah. to Morgan, Morgan Freeman. Freeman? Yeah, so there was like yeah. an accusation that there may have been some type of sexual harassment or maybe <laughs> something that was inappropriate. Yeah. I don't know the mm. specifics. We'll say that was something inappropriate. inappropriate. But is that, was, do we think that's purely based off of maybe the way that she presents as a cis, well, she's, she's cis presenting. I feel like yeah, she kind of presents present. as a cis mm -hmm. woman, but maybe someone who maybe is a little bit more maybe non-binary or maybe a little bit more gender non-conforming or androgynous like Grace Jones, would something similar have happened in the same way? Do we mm. think that? Yes, I, I think so. That's a really interesting question. Mm -hmm. When we think about things like sexual harassment, mm -hmm. people who are greater at greater risk are people of color, mm -hmm. yeah. right? When we yeah, think yeah. of, mm -hmm. you know, stats, Right, it's it's two in five mm -hmm. for black women. Yeah. Right mm -hmm. in Latinx communities, it's one in four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. and then folks who present in non-binary ways, trans folks. Yeah. There's all kinds of sexual harassment and violence. And so when we talk yeah. about things like it's LGBTQ there. folks in the media, mm -hmm. yeah, you're right. We're also talking about things like objectification and harassment. Mm -hmm that those things are, are really important in the conversation, that we yeah. might be increasing risk with increased visibility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and so I, I'm wondering yeah. what we think about the trade-off there. Yeah. Mm. yeah, that's interesting. I think that's an interesting question. I, I think that when we talk about like those like 
because I feel like when you talk about sexual harassment and Hollywood and all of that, it all basically boils down to power hmm. and you know who who is who power has those types of power and that privilege. Mm-hmm. And I think like when we get to the point, I wish somebody would come on to me so I can get some access to something. Wow. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but no one yeah. comes on to you me. You are so low. Nobody comes on to me, so I'm all right. Not even on Jack. You but know. we're talking oh, about now, more than... Oh, that body over here. here. No, 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 Nobody I, don't come on to this. We're, just about no. come on. we're, we're, we're talking more than come-ons, well, but I, mean, I, I digress. I do feel like... <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, like the Morgan Freeman... I, I, I mean, we, Jack, you know, Janet Mock is very privileged to, you know, she... You know, her, I always tell people her. Is it her so, fault? Was no, it her fault? No, 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 no. I don't think it's her fault. I've been sexually harassed uh, at jobs plenty of times by men and women. And like I said, it's really just about that power. You mm-hmm. know, when Morgan, Morgan Freeman probably holds a lot of power. Mm-hmm. And Hollywood so thinking and about that power, how do we start to change the entertainment industry? How do mm-hmm. we start to get more representation? Oh, I think it's already started. I really do. I agree. Like, I, I, I think agree. it has already started. I mean, network TV is not making money like that. I mean, I mean, it is. It's just not as powerful. I mean, this show is a testament. You watching the show is a testament of the change that is coming mm-hmm. to just the industry alone. Look at Empire, and mm-hmm. look at um, Jamal's uh, character in in hip hop. Culture, yeah, Woo. yeah. you know, yeah. music industry, they ain't going a lot, they ain't yeah. going for that a lot. I'm You're loving right. the you know, fluidity I mean, that's showing well, up in, yeah. in hip hop, yes, and I they're do. being supported for the whole show. Mm-hmm. I think another example we talked about a little bit is Pose. Like, when has there been like a a, 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 a television show on network TV that's mm-hmm. displaying and talking solely about mm-hmm. the ballroom community? Like, yeah. this is an LGBT community, like, and mostly LGBT people of color mm-hmm. type space. So, it's like, you know, when has that happened? And, and, it wasn't and, until 2018. And I never thought I would see it in my life. Yeah. Before. But Shadine, yeah. I think it goes back to that point I brought up earlier about uh, power and accessibility. Mm-hmm. Who are the people behind the scenes? Who are people who had the camera? Mm-hmm. Who are the people who had the notes to say, action? Who are those people? Mm-hmm. That's where the platform starts sometimes. At the end of the day, it's all, I think, you know, like I said, when I spoke to Ava DuVernay, she, and she said, it's about money. It's about Come money. On, and about power. So, you know, uh, it. I think the good thing about um, Black Panthers is that it broke that, it, it shattered that notion that you do not have to, like white people will not just go see um, white films, hmm. you know, hmm. because it didn't get number one just by black folk. It got number one, you know, through white through white folks and, you know, so hmm. it, it shattered that glass that glass ceiling and saying, no, white people will go see black films. Well, let me, let me ask a question, and this is for the table. Are we want more representation because we're trying to push a gay agenda? I mean, like, yes. let's be honest. What, what, is there, yes. is, is there, the, is there, there a gay agenda? agenda? Yes, there is. There's just a gay like agenda? black agenda. There was a, there, it, it's not, but there's Honey, no I'm wrong. not gay, so I don't know about that agenda. <laughs> <laughs> I was well, not excluded agenda, on that but, schedule. I, I, What's I, on the gay agenda? Like, what is gay the gay agenda? agenda? But it's more like a, there's nothing wrong with it being an agenda. Like, mm. yes, I need, I need for my nephew May, he may, you know, all intents and purposes, he may be heterosexual. I need for him to see that there are different folks in the world. Yes, mm-hmm. there is a gay agenda. Okay. Yes, yes we there exist. is a black agenda. We exist. And there's nothing wrong with saying that. Just like when when white folks, when them white men in the 80s was dying of AIDS, there was a white AIDS gay agenda. But I wanted becoming, to get across. It's becoming so, a little <laughs> redundant. And I'm going to be the one to say it because I'm, I'm going to be the one to be controversial on this it. show. It. It's becoming so much redundancy. Like, we need black. We need gay. We need this. Is it? Do we really need that? Because the white person has it? Yeah. Is, that, I, is that really true? I think true? we need authentic, authenticity. I think yeah, we need authentic lives, right. authentic people, authentic characters, authentic stories. And I think that, you know, people... People can pick that up. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If, if it's a story that, that it seems relatable, that it seems like it's actually genuine, you're going to sense that. Mm-hmm. It's going to be something about that that gives you that mm-hmm. feeling. But when something is made up, when something yeah. is fabricated, it's like, come on now, you're blowing smoke up my ass so and we, I ain't no fool. We need to vote with our dollars. <laughs> yeah, like that, always. That, that always. media mm-hmm. and <laughs> bling, entertainment... Bling, 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 bling. <laughs> That's Media right. and entertainment is Money. an industry. And mm-hmm. so we are the consumers. So... They That's will true. they will continue to make what we buy. And Absolutely. so if art 
if part of art is meant to imitate life, then we have to tell them what we want to see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that goes back to what was it, the Oscars and seeing more black people being, what is it, nominated or winning, winning mm -hmm. awards? Mm -hmm. What was the hashtag? Being Oscar nominated. so white? Exactly. Yeah. So white. Yep. Oh, I think so this white. was the first year that there was, in one category, it was, on, it was all black, black people. all black mm -hmm. cast. Black or, you know, black, black actors, black mm -hmm. nominees. Mm -hmm. um, it goes back to that. You got to fight for what you need. Because before mm -hmm. even people started to argue about the concept of all white people being at Oscars, mm -hmm. there was no, there was nothing. Mm -hmm. Then we got to that. Then we got to argue for black people being on television. But right. that's also because of social media. I think social media played a huge role mm -hmm. in that type of advocacy. Because before, you know, network television was really controlled by, you know, top executives that didn't look like us. Mm -hmm. But now there is so much, there's so many other outlets, especially when millennials, you know, they can, you can watch YouTube, you can watch Netflix, you know? I love Netflix. That makes me think, so do we think that like, maybe like social media is like amplifying this gay agenda? Or oh, do absolutely. we think that, you know? Yes, and I love absolutely. it. Absolutely. Hmm, yes, talk about the, yeah, social media the amplifies talk everything. Talk about the LGBT agenda. So I, I want to pull my middle child card and mess this up a little bit. <laughs> we haven't said anything about RuPaul. Mm. And why oh, is Ru. that? And oh, why is Ru. that? Well, let me tell you something. Let, let, now, we talk about it. RuPaul really has paved the way. She has, she's paid her dues. And she's an old queen, honey. Baby. She's got to give her life. I mean, you know, we all... Oh, RuPaul is grandmother. Okay. I paid you RuPaul when she came for the trans community, baby. Well, no, about I'm about excluding <laughs> us <laughs> from drag Or I want to hear that from you. No, that I in agree. itself, baby, RuPaul has paid us. Like, no, I just no, can't I, with I, her. I, I, I can't I with that. However, I mean, there is no however. No, no, but when you show people, I, I, I want to hear that. You however. can, you can, you cannot dismiss the work before RuPaul, which is what Ru did. Yeah. Ru, Ru dismissed the work the, of trans women yeah, yeah, I, 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 in, I in agree, the role they played I'm not, on the show. I'm not disagreeing with what you're saying, but you cannot, dis you cannot, um, because there was a time that even though we as our, our community, we knew it was a difference between being a drag queen and mm -hmm. being a trans woman. Mm -hmm. We knew. Hetero, heterosexual, the mainstream did not know. And I think um, RuPaul made it, you know, chipped at that ceiling. I'm not saying that she shattered it, but I think she chipped at it. I don't think that there could by be. By excluding people? No, 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 that's no, 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 what I was thinking. No, 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 there we go. No, by being that's visible. What I was there we go. By being visible. I'm saying, you know, RuPaul has been our sister now. Cover girl, work it out. Yes. I do not think that there could, you cannot have a Janet Mock and you cannot have a Laverne Cox without a RuPaul. It, it, it just doesn't happen. How? How not? Because, because again, <laughs> she she makes it a little bit. Because RuPaul is in the '90s, you cannot dismiss. Even though, like I said, we know the difference between a trans woman and a and a and a drag queen. Mm -hmm. We no, know that we don't. There are a lot of people who do not know. There are no, people, we, can, we cannot say that. I, I, I we we, I we do. Know. But us I, at the table? No, I. Do. I feel like a lot of people in our community, especially black LGBT. So what is the difference? No, they Can don't. They don't. They don't. Real quick. They what don't. is the difference they're between they're a drag queen and a trans woman? A trans, a trans woman is someone who lives, this is their life. This is who they are and not live their life. This is, this is entertainment purposes. Yeah. But I can tell you in the 90s, folks did not know that. And know folks don't know that in 2018. But I think let me tell you something. The black I mean, community. I think people are a little bit more aware Let, let me get this out. Let me get this out. Because in the black community, you, you may walk down the street and identify as a trans woman and they might, oh, look at that drag queen. Mm -hmm. Today, in 2018, people still do not know. Mm -hmm. And RuPaul, for his platform, mm -hmm. all the work that he has done, chipping at that ceiling, chip, chip, chip. Ru knows. Yeah. And that's, and that's knows. what I think. I think Ru should know better. It, is, the, it is, diminishes all the work that you have done. And we're, I, we're inclusive. We're, no. We are an inclusive no, community. I mean, so I, it's I, like, I how, dare you, how dare you, how dare you, how dare you exclude your own? How Support dare you it. exclude the people who have helped to build what, this but thing? I was, what I will say is that we don't back Antar into a corner is that all, do all spaces have to be for all people? Is a question. And I think that's a great question that could be had. But I think that's a different question than saying that trans people had no, have no place as a part of this thing that they've always no. had a place in. No. I think when, I you're thinking about, when you're thinking about transitions, when you're thinking about people's mm -hmm. journeys, the, the, when you're thinking about the evolution of people, like just thinking mm -hmm. about a transition period, you don't necessarily start off at that end point. You know, it, it's, it's a journey and you have to arrive there in mm -hmm. some type of way. And oftentimes, you know, there are different things that happen along that way. Mm -hmm. And drag, uh, oftentimes, it's just a part of that. And that's based off of the society that we live I'll in. add true for my damn self. <laughs> no, <laughs> Listen. No, I agree. I, I, I think, so I think what is getting, uh, for me, I do agree that what 
what was said and you know I do think it is not really defensible but I don't think you also take away the visibility that RuPaul created oh, for mean? the LGBT community mm -hmm. and that's what I'm saying right. like I, I know that. for me as when I will never forget, I was in the tenth grade, fifteen years old, and I saw a drag queen on TV. When I saw RuPaul get up in a Spike Lee film, I mean, I, I had never seen that before in a Spike Lee film, and I'm like, this is a drag queen mm -hmm. in the nineties, bitch, please. No, I mean that you can't dismiss. You cannot okay. dismiss that, and that's okay. why in. All of these conversations, it sounds mm -hmm. to me like it just keeps going back to representation mm -hmm. and why representation mm -hmm. matters, mm -hmm. right? Why that so we important. that we need to see more people who look like us, more mm -hmm. people who don't look like us, because we are just a small part of the well, community. Shadeen, let, me, let me take a step further. Appropriate representation. My first black, well, I won't even say black film. My first film that I saw with. Um, drag queens was too Wong Fu, mm -hmm. and let's talk about and all. I would say all those actors were straight. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about appropriate representation, so I'm with you. Yeah, but let's let's take it a step further. So not just the roles, but casting that matters. absolutely. Oh, 100. And they did, they did a bang up job. It was really it was really excellent, an excellent movie. But why we had people who actually live those lives. But I don't always think that they should play them. <laughs> we should but at least I, play them. But see, oh, I think, my you know, God. I think on the flip side of that, I think that now that we are having people who are actually reflect the characters that they're playing, and so, so for example, kind of like what we talked about already, I think like having people like Amaya playing mm -hmm. the role of a trans woman, having people like mm -hmm. Laverne playing exactly. the role of a trans person, exactly. this gonna, is your it's life. It's going to give you more, you know, like you're going to get more real. Like you're going to get Thank you. that. That's you're, what I'm saying. I don't you really can get actually... that with Laverne because I don't think she's a good actress, but I do get it with Amaya. Now we know you biased about Laverne. We get it. She's not a what, about, what about Kate? Not, what about Caitlyn Jenner? Caitlin, oh, well, no, we're Caitlyn Jenner. We're gonna, gonna, we're gonna put a pin in that. What about yeah, we're Caitlyn? Gonna put a pin in that's that. all the time that we oh. have. <laughs> As always, we'd like to thank you for the outpour of love and support. I'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.